Welcome to this session on bond and yield curve basics. The objective of this session is to provide you with the basics of bonds. We'll also talk about what the yield curve is, what it is telling investors, and how its shape helps tell a story about the direction of the economy and which strategies an investor might employ to obtain the best return on their investment. But first, let's explain what a bond is. The bond market, as it's often referred to, is a very complex and large market providing many investment options. But what is a bond and what are the key terms? A bond is basically a loan that the bond purchaser, or bond holder, makes to the bond issuer. Bonds are issued by corporations, governments, and municipalities when they need capital or money to fund a certain project. So if you buy a government bond, you are essentially lending money to the government. If you buy a corporate bond, you are lending money to that specific corporation. Like a loan, a bond pays interest periodically, which can be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or at maturity, depending on the issuer. Also similar to a loan, the principal investment would be repaid at a predetermined time or final maturity. For example, suppose a municipality wants to build a new road for $10 million and decides to issue a bond to help pay for the road. The municipality decides to sell 10,000 bonds to investors for $1,000 each. In this instance, the face value of each bond is $1,000. The municipality, known as the bond issuer, determines an annual interest rate to pay the investor, known as the coupon rate, and a time frame in which it will repay the principal amount. To set the coupon rate, the issuer looks at the prevailing market interest rates and determines what coupon would be competitive to attract investors, but at a rate that also makes sense and is affordable for the issuer. The municipality will also determine the maturity date of the bond or when the principal will be paid back in full. The risk behind every bond is a chance that the issuer defaults, which means that they fail to fully repay the loan or pay the principal back at maturity. Independent rating agencies assess the credit risk of each issuer and determine the chance of the issuer defaulting. A higher credit rating means chances are better that the issuer will make timely payments. A lower credit rating typically means that the chances are greater that the issuer will not make timely payments and could default. With this lower credit rating and higher chance of default, the issuer will need to pay the investor a higher coupon rate to compensate for this risk. They assign ratings to each issuer and the bond they are offering. The highest rating is listed as AAA, and lower ratings go down from there to B, C, and D, or default. So now that you know what a bond is, the next question to ask is what is the bond yield? Yield refers to the annual return on investment. The yield on a bond is based on both the purchase price of the bond and the interest or coupon payments received. Although a bond's coupon is usually fixed, the price of the bond fluctuates continuously in response to changes in interest rates, supply and demand, and time to maturity and credit quality of the bond. After the bond is issued, it can trade in the market at a price at par, premium, or discount until it matures. All bond prices work off of a price called par, which is essentially 100% of the price. A bond placed over 100, such as 102, is said to have a premium price, and a bond priced below 100 is said to be priced at a discount. For the investor, the current yield is the annual return earned on the price paid for the bond. It is calculated by dividing the bond's annual coupon interest payments by its purchase price. Let's look at an example. If an investor purchased a bond with a coupon of 3% and a full face value of $1 million and paid a price of par, or 100, the annual interest earned would be $30,000. We get this by multiplying the face value of $1 million times a 3% coupon. Current yield is the same as the coupon, 3%, as we can divide the annual interest earned by the face value of the bond. That gives us a 3% current yield. Now let's look at the same bond as if it was bought at a discount to par at 90. In this case, the bond purchased has the same coupon of 3%, but the discount price made the face value only $900,000. Interest earned in this case would still be $30,000, as the investor still would make his 3% on the full face value of $1 million. But because the investor purchased the bond at a discount, the yield on the bond would be higher due to the lower face value. The current yield is higher at 3.3% as we can divide the annual interest earned by the discounted face value of the bond. That gives us the 3.3% current yield. Yield to maturity measures the total return the investor receives by holding the bond until its maturity. A bond's yield to maturity reflects all of the interest payments from the time purchased until maturity, including interest earned on the interest. It also includes any price appreciation or depreciation on the bond. 
Yield to call is the same measure as yield to maturity, but gives you the yield to the next call date if the bond is callable or is matured early by the issuer prior to the expected maturity date. As you saw and as we will illustrate again, the key concept to remember is the bond's price always moves inversely to its yield. This concept allows the investor to understand that the critical feature of the bond market is a bond's price. The price reflects the value of the income that it provides through its regular coupon interest payments. When prevailing interest rates fall, older bonds with higher coupons become more valuable. Investors holding these bonds can charge a premium price to sell them in the open market. And conversely, if interest rates rise, older bonds with lower coupons will have to be sold at a discount to make them more attractive in the current market. Bonds are traded in the open market after they are issued. When they are traded in the open market, the bond's price and yield determine its value. As we discussed, the bond's yield is the actual annual return an investor can expect to receive if the bond is held to final maturity. Again, yields are based on the purchase price of the bond, and as we mentioned earlier, if interest rates rise, bond prices would need to fall to allow the yield to be more attractive to new investors looking for this higher rate. Here is an example again. If the bond is paying a 3% coupon and rates remain constant, the price of the bond is at par or 100 and the yield would be at 3%. If rates rise, an investor will want a yield to reflect the current environment. The 3% coupon can't change, so in order to attract investors, the bond price would have to be lowered to say 90, so the yield is reflective of the higher market rates. This bond has a discount price, or is said to be traded at a discount to par, and would make the yield higher at 3.3%. If interest rates fall, the market will price this bond accordingly. Again, even though the coupon of 3% won't change, the bond price would move higher since the investor would be getting a higher coupon than other comparable investments in the market, so the higher price would make the yield slightly lower in line with other market rates. This bond has a premium price, or said to be trading at premium to par. As you can see, rising interest rates are bad for bond investors, as new bonds will pay a higher interest rate than older bonds, which will cause the old bonds to drop in price. On the other hand, if the investor bought a bond with a higher interest rate and rates begin to fall, this would be a great situation for the investor. So the question becomes, how will the bond price move when interest rates change? This is tough, as some bonds are more sensitive to changes in interest rates than others. To estimate how much a specific bond price will move when interest rates change, the bond market uses a measure known as duration. Duration is a risk measure that allows the investor to compare bonds with different maturities, coupons, and face values. Duration tells the approximate change in price that any given bond would experience in the event of 100 basis point or 1% change in interest rates. For example, suppose interest rates fall by 1%, causing yields on every bond in the market to fall by the same amount. Then the price of the bond with a duration of 2 years will rise 2%, and the price of a 5-year duration bond would rise 5%. This clearly shows that the bonds with longer maturities, and of course longer duration, have a greater price risk. For the investor, a bond with a longer maturity may have a better interest rate, but it also carries with it a more price risk or duration, which could be detrimental in certain rate environments. Now that we've reviewed the concept and relationship of bonds, prices, and yields, we need to determine what the yield curve is and what it is telling us. The yield curve is just a line on the graph that plots out the relationship between bond yield and its maturity. Yield curve plots out the yields for the same bonds in the same asset class. The most popular yield curve is the treasury yield curve, or the treasury curve, but an investor can view other curves to see their relationship versus the treasury curve. Often, other investments are priced and measured as a spread compared to the corresponding treasury investment. This is the benchmark curve. A standard yield curve plots out the various maturities along one axis and the various yields along another axis. This yield curve can be created by any asset class, although the treasury yield curve is the most widely used and analyzed, and as mentioned, it's the benchmark for all other assets. The maturities you see here are the standard treasury maturity dates used in a yield curve. The yield curve changes constantly, all throughout the day and even overnight, as the markets value the yield required for a specific bond maturity. This is also known as the term structure of interest rates. Each yield curve has a shape or slope, and this tells the investors what the market anticipates for future rates and or economic conditions. By analyzing the yield curve and its shape, investors can gain some insight on what type of bonds to buy and how to best structure their investment portfolio. This also helps others price loans and deposits correctly.
There are four different yield curve shapes based on the market and economic conditions. Normal, steep, flat, and inverted. The normal or upward sloping yield curve allows investors to look at yields from left to right. It's called the normal yield curve because most investors would expect a higher yield on their investment as they move out the yield curve and invest in bonds with longer maturities. A three-month bond may yield less than 1%, but to go out to 10 years, the investor would typically want to earn a higher yield for the added risk. The flat yield curve generally signals an economic slowdown is happening or expected to approach. The assumption with the flat yield curve is that the Federal Reserve will raise short-term interest rates quickly to restrain a rapidly growing economy or accelerating inflation. But investors believe the economy is slowing or inflation is controlled and expect longer-term rates to begin to fall. This type of curve is unusual and indicates the curve is in a transition to either an upward or downward sloping yield curve depending on the economic projection. Here is what a steep yield curve looks like. The assumption behind a steep yield curve is that interest rates will begin to rise in the near future as the economy mends and inflation increases. Investors demand more yield as maturity extends if they expect rapid economic growth because of the associated risks of higher inflation and higher interest rates, which can both hurt bond returns. When inflation is rising, the Federal Reserve often has to raise shorter term rates to fight inflation. An inverted yield curve happens when a flat yield curve begins to transition back to a normal or steep yield curve. It is usually an indication that the market is projecting an economic recession in the near term. Historically, the yield curve becomes inverted 12 to 18 months prior to a recession. This type of yield curve usually indicates investors are anticipating an economic recession in the near term. And usually, the inverted yield curve happens when transitioning from a flat to a normal yield curve. When this happens, the market is anticipating lower rates and yields move lower before the Fed can begin to lower short-term rates. The yield curve has many uses. As we discussed in our review, the yield curve has historically been a very good predictor of economic conditions. In addition to that, investors use a treasury yield curve to serve as a benchmark when pricing other assets. As we know, treasuries are the least risky investments there are, so when investing in other asset classes such as corporate bonds, investors can determine what the treasury yield is at a certain maturity and then determine if the corporate bond yield is high enough or has spread great enough over the treasury yield curve to make the corporate bond a good investment. Finally, investors can look at the yield curve and its current shape, make predictions of its future shape, and employ various strategies to take advantage of the slope of the curve. Now let's talk about strategies investors can employ to improve their portfolio based on the yield curves we just discussed. In a laddering portfolio strategy, the investor invests equal amounts of securities maturing periodically at certain points on the curve. Investments can be set up to mature each month, quarter, or every year. This allows the investor to take less risk and have an investment maturing at each interval to allow them to reinvest on a timely basis. Most investors use this strategy because it takes the risk out of trying to determine the future slope of the yield curve or timing the market. Another strategy is for an investor to set up a barbell strategy, where the investor keeps some money in a short-term maturity, say three months, and invests the other portion of the portfolio in a longer maturity, say at the 10-year mark. This is usually done with a steep yield curve, as investors want to keep some investments short to take advantage in case short-term rates increase. But if they don't, they also want to take advantage of already high rates on the longer part of the curve. An investor can employ a bullet strategy and just invest the entire portfolio in one point on the curve. This strategy is riskier as the investor is taking a bet on the future slope of the yield curve. This may happen if the curve is inverted and the overall market expectation is for the yield curve to take on a more normal slope. In this case, the investor wants to lock in a nice yield at the high point on the curve before overall yields decrease. Investors also look to make an extra return with one portfolio strategy known as rolling down the curve. This is when the yield curve is normal or slopes upward. Assuming yields remain constant as the bond approaches maturity or rolls down the curve, the bond is held for a period of time as it appreciates in price and is sold before it reaches maturity to realize the gain. For example, assume an investor bought a 10-year treasury at around 5%. As the bond approaches maturity or rolls down the curve in, let's say, seven years, and again, we're assuming rates stay constant, he is now holding an investment with three years remaining at maturity at 5%, while market rates for three years have coupons only around 3-4%. to He has an above market rate and would be able to sell this to another investment at a gain because of the higher coupons. 
Now you know what bonds are and how their price and yield are determined. We also review duration, a common measure of a bond price risk, as well as yield curves and their various shapes and strategies investors might use based on those yield curves. As you saw in our examples, the yield curve is constantly changing, which does impact bond prices and yields. Understanding these interactions allows the investors to better prepare their portfolio in a variety of interest rate scenarios. Thank you for participating in today's session.